Hello everybody and welcome back and right now I will show you how you can actually install the Metasploitable which we will use to actually scan and attack later on. Now it is rather simple to install, all you have to do is go to this website right here which is information.rapid7, you basically just in your Google search bar you can just type Metasploitable download and this is one of the first things that will pop up. All you have to do after that is actually uh, specify all of these right here which is basically first name last name and so on once you submit that it will lead you to a page where you can actually download the metasploitable once you click that and download it i don't think it is that large perhaps a few megabytes like 100 or something like that not really sure uh, once you do that you will receive uh, something like this so if i just open this you will receive this zip file right here so metasploitable linux which is basically the metasploitable 2 I believe right now there is Metasploitable 3, which is Windows based, but it takes too much uh, hardware in order to run. Basically, you need like 4 gigabytes of RAM, of RAM minimum in order to run that, that Metasploitable 3 machine, which is a lot comparing that we are also running the Kali Linux machine at the same time. So we are instead using the Metasploitable 2, which is the Linux machine. Once you actually extract the files, you will have these five files right here. The important file right for us is the metasploitable.vmdk, which we will use to actually set up as a disk for our virtual machine. So all you have to do after that, oops, what is this? Is open up your virtual box. So let me close this, and you can actually navigate and make a new virtual machine. Call it whatever you want. I will just call it metasploitable and make sure to make it to be Linux and in the version of Linux go down here and select other Linux. Now I'm not really sure whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, let's just leave it on 32-bit and click on the next. As far as the memory size, 512 megabytes will be more than enough for this machine, so just select next and right here uh, instead of the actually using the virtual hard disk now or creating the virtual hard disk, we want to use an existing hard disk, which is the hard disk that we downloaded from our Metasploitable. So just go use an existing virtual hard disk, then select right here to select your hard disk, and then try to find it wherever you saved it. As we can see, I saved it on my desktop in new folder. It is this file right here, which is the size of 1.8 gigabytes. You select it right there, click open, select right here, and you can see right now I have metasploitable.vmdk. So I click here on create and I am good to go. I created my, my metasploitable virtual machine. Right now all you have to do is click here on start and basically this will start the metasploitable and it will install it for you. So let's see if this will work since I had a problems with Metasploitable in the past, but I managed to download it before. But as we can see right now, it says unable to boot. Please use a kernel appropriate for your CPU. Now, in case you get this error, just close the virtual machine. So uh, click on X, power of the machine. Go to the settings of the virtual machine. Go under the system and then on the processor and in the extended features, click on the enable PAE. So click on that, then click on the OK right here, and then try to start the virtual machine once again. Right now, I believe this will fix the error and it will actually start installing the Metasploitable. As we can see right here, it is actually starting up and there is no error. And all you have to do right now is just wait for it to install it will not prompt you any questions, it will simply install it for you. It is not as complicated as the Cal Linux installation. And as soon as you install it, you will have another virtual machine which you can scan. Now after the installation of the Metasploitable, what I will show you is how you can actually make both the Metasploitable and your Cal Linux machine to belong to your local area network. Now by belonging to your local area network, I basically mean to have the IP address which will belong to your local area network. For example, if I go right here, let me just open my command prompt, and on my regular Windows 10 machine I type ipconfig, you can see my IP address is 192.168.1.4. I want my 
Cal Linux machine to have a similar IP address which will start with the same 192.168.1. something and also my Metasploitable to be uh, with the same start of the IP address. So let me show you what I mean. First of all, in order for you to log into the Metasploitable, you just need to specify MSF admin as username and MSF admin as password. This will actually open the terminal command line for this machine where you can execute the same commands that you can execute in the uh, Kali Linux terminal. As we can see, if I type ifconfig in my Metasploitable, you can see that my IP address is actually 10.0.2.15, which doesn't really belong to the range of IP addresses for my local area network. In order to change that, both for your uh, Kali Linux machine and both for your Metasploitable, all you have to do is actually close both of these machines. So I will close my Metasploitable. I will also close my Kali Linux machine. So power off. And all you have to do is go to your virtual box, find those two machines. So let me just wait for my Python ethical hacking machine to actually close. While it's closing, we can actually change the settings for the Metasploitable. You click on the machine, go to settings, go to the network settings. And here, instead of attach to net, change that to be bridge adapter. And here you can change the name of your adapter. If you want to, I will just leave it by default on this. I will click here, OK. I can now start the Metasploitable virtual machine once again. And I will do the same for my Python ethical hacking Kali Linux machine. So I'll go to the settings. I will go to network. From that, change it to bridge adapter and leave it uh, on this. As I said, you can change it if you want to, but make sure to find the one that actually works. Now, one thing also I need to mention is if you're using a wireless adapter, uh, sometimes wireless adapter won't really work in Kali Linux and they're not supported by Kali Linux. So your best use is to actually use the cable internet connection. Now, you can try the wireless adapter as well. Maybe your wireless adapter is supported, but most likely it will not be. Now you can check well, uh, what uh, wireless adapters are actually supported by Kali Linux Online and you can actually buy a cheap one for like $10. So that is another option you can do. So once you select all of that, click on the OK. And let us see if Metasploitable booted up. It did. We log in with the MSF admin and MSF admin. And if I just up ifconfig once again, you can see that right now my IP address is 192.168.1.5. It is no longer 10.0.2.15. And this .1.5 now belongs to my local area network range for my IP addresses. So that would be about it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And in the next tutorial, uh, we will actually continue coding the, or not continue, we will start coding the simple program, which will actually retrieve the banner from open ports, whether they actually send the version of software running on them. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.